Oh, a happy new year, hi. Yeah. Did you have a good holiday season? Yeah, for sure, yeah, great, yeah. Oh, what is it that you got there? Oh, nothing, it's just um, uh, it's a new year's resolution. It's not oh, a, let's see. No, well, I... Mm. Subjugate humanity, vanish regular Luke to the space between worlds, take shoes off on an aeroplane, Eyeliner, sinister jacket, your evil look from the mirror dimension. <sighs> so evil Luke is still a thing. Can I have my sunglasses back? No. If you don't let me have them, aren't you sinking to my level? Oh. Show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend, show of the weekend. Yeah, he had me tied up in uh, behind the sofa. I yeah. always forget to check yeah, behind yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hi, Mike. <laughs> I, thought, I was, yes, yeah, behind there since um, May 20, what? 2019. Yep. <laughs> Evil Luke's been at the wheel for quite a long time. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's right. No, just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, that's too... I was going to have to like redo all the quizzes that we'd done. I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> Why? Did, did anything happen in the last half of l last year? No. No? Yeah, you didn't? Be a, okay. a, a video, though, in the cards that you can watch of some things. Oh, my God. <laughs> Evil Luke didn't do the one thing I hate the most, did he? A what? charity single. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. So, welcome back. Show the weekend Hello. 2020. Woo! New decade! Woo! Let's start a new decade. God, it's going to go on for so long. <laughs> so I thought, new year, new me. Yeah. Let's play Breath of the Wild again. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. It was because remember, last year we made a video where we talked about our favourite games of the decade. Yeah. And I talked about Breath of the Wild, you talked yep. about Kingdom of Amalur. Yep. Oh, I like the way you said that. Amalur. <laughs> it made me realise making that video, I was like, Luke, you clown, you claim to love Breath of the Wild and yet you haven't even played it again on the extremely difficult master mode. Oh. So that's what I did. I started the game again on master mode. Yeah. So master mode is something that they added with some DLC. Um, it's a separate save file, so it doesn't overwrite your game, which is actually the thing that stopped me from doing it. I was like, I'm not going to, you know, start the game again. Not when there's capture to get and I've got fast travel to everywhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was like, mm, you know, I probably don't want to overwrite that. But then I realized it doesn't in a different save slot. Problem solved. So that problem went away. But the problem that arose is that master mode is very hard. Hard. Very hard. <laughs> They've made it very hard for me <laughs> to play. Yeah. It is not fudging about. No joke. There's like a Lionel. You remember the Lionels? They're sort yeah. of like centauri things. Hello. <laughs> Hello, is it me you're looking for? Never, absolutely not. They put one of them in the on the Great Plateau in the like the starting area. Yeah. And it's not just that the enemies are increased. All you know, like the enemies are colour coded in the game. So like yes. there's like the red enemies are like the lowest level, yeah. and then there's blue, and then it kind of goes up to white yeah, 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 exactly. Basically, everything just goes up one. Yeah. And then also there are more enemies. And also, uh, their health recharges almost immediately. If you let's so say if you like give them a poke and like send them flying, by the time they get back to you, their health is like almost all the way up again. It's like you wait a fraction of a second and it starts going. So basically, it means when you attack an enemy, it has to be relentless. It has to be like a one-hit kill, or it has to be like you have to. So if your sword or staff, or whatever, is about to break, yes, yes, you've got to immediately switch. Yeah, you've got to you've got to immediately switch, and also you the enemies that's, are. That's the one thing I don't like about Breath of the Wild is the degradable weapons. You in know, the in middle the of battle, and you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in the early stages of the game as well, like when you're kind of using like scrub sticks. equipment, pot lids and sticks and stuff, it's like everything breaks. <laughs> Because the, all the enemies are like stepped up, the good sword that you have that you've been like saving up, you basically will need it to take down even one enemy and enemies are rarely like by themselves. So as a result, what you end up doing is like not fighting, not getting ah! involved. Yeah, there's a lot of running. <laughs> there's a lot more sneaking. It feels quite cool when you do take something down. 
at least in, at the stage of the game that I'm at now, which is like I've done a bit of exploration. I've got up to the first uh, Divine Beast. I just did that thing where you have to sneak around on the mountaintop, like with the with the other Lionel, like mm -hmm. collecting shock arrows and stuff. The first time I played the game, it took me many tr many tries, but I I, I killed that Lionel because I didn't realise that you were basically supposed to sneak around and get all the yeah. shock arrows. And I was like, wow, this enemy's tough. But you know, I went and got like some elixirs and better armour and good weapons and stuff. And with a bit of practice, I like took the Lionel mm -hmm. down. It's absolutely out of the question in Master Mode. <laughs> I got to the fairy fountain and I was like, good, right, to collect a whole bunch of fairies and stuff because, you know, it's good to have like mm -hmm. fairies. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mm -hmm. do that regularly. Yeah. When I'm For the playing. uninitiated, when you die in Zelda, if you've got a fairy in your inventory, it brings you back to Straight life with back full to life. hearts. So, and what basically happened, I was like, good, all right, got a whole load of fairies. So that'll, you know, tide me over for a little while. Found like one moblin, it hit me, died, fairy back, hit me, died, fairy back, <laughs> hit me, died, fairy back. And I was like, oh, my fairies have gone. I ate them all. So, 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 yeah, like, they're a really precious resource in the game. And just in this one fight, as soon as Link got back up, he was hit again. They've, like, just, you know those, like, robots, like, little robots in the, um, that hide out in the, in, in the shrines and try and, like, fight you? There are just some extra ones in there in there, and you just basically can't kill them. And it's just, you're just hitting things and nothing's dying. So... <laughs> it is absolutely brutal, yeah. But what's weird though is that some some of it's difficult, and then some of it, like you go into a shrine, and if there's no enemies in the shrine, then like that part of the game is basically the same as it ever was. Mm -hmm. It's just when you're out and about encountering right. enemies, you can see that it's like a DLC extra, and not something that they spent loads of time over. No. Because I think Breath of the Wild is not an easy game, but it's yeah. not very difficult. It's like all the best games. It's just the difficulty is perfectly pitched for the game that it's trying to be. Yeah, so like, it's yeah. it's um, it's challenging but still accessible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's got that thing like you were saying earlier about the Lionel and like I didn't realise that I wasn't supposed to kill it, but that's the the joy of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, that you can is that you uh, can approach it from so many different directions. Like mm -hmm. that's what I love about that game is that everyone's exploring the world in their own way and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But it sounds like this hardcore mode is just like you have to be sneaky or else you have to be much. sneaky. And because I'm bad yeah. at the combat in that game. Well, like, I was, I'm yeah. not as good as I thought I was because uh, I edited the game of the games of the decade video. And I, I had some footage from my gameplay and footage from your gameplay, and your gameplay is like, whoo, doo, 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 doo. and then <laughs> now I'm just like, eh. <laughs> I mean, that did represent like dozens and dozens of hours of playing it and stuff. I guess I do, I do love being back in the world, and and you know, I'd forgotten how fun and lovely it is, and and like just exploring is really fun when you don't have very much stamina, you don't have very many hearts, and you're like, you can see things in the distance, and they are so far away, and you're like, I. Oh, I could, I could go there now, yeah. and I will. I'm trying to do the game in a different order, like to where, right. I, where, where I did it before. The game sort of naturally leads you, sort of pushes, you, gently nudges you towards this particular path. But I'm trying to sort of divert and like wander around a bit more. I don't think I will complete it again in this mode. Probably not, just because mm. it's so much fun wandering around and doing the shrines and like unlocking things. But in terms of the major story beats. I have done them before and it wasn't that long ago and I sort yeah. of remember it quite well and I don't know. What I'm kind of tempted to, what I'd really like to do is start the game again, not on not, master mode yeah. and play it again through, you know, as it was meant to be sort of yeah. sort of enjoyed. But I can't do that without overwriting my um, save. So maybe I could make a new profile on us. This is a Luke problem for later, <laughs> not a you problem to hear about right now. In conclusion, I'm glad I finally gave it a go, the old, the old master mode. Yeah. It is savagely difficult. Um, but the game's a little unbalanced, but you know, it's still Breath of the Wild. It's, it's there, and it's, it's there for the people that want to do that to themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe Mike will play it. Finally. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and I was thinking, like, what games do I want to play? I thought about maybe, uh, and I just the answer was Breath of the Wild. After making that video, I was yeah. like, what do I want to play? I want to play Breath of the Wild. <laughs> But maybe I should play something else. Maybe I should play something I haven't played before. Yeah. Maybe I should play Dark Souls 2, although everyone says it's not as good as Dark Souls. Maybe I should play Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 is pretty good. I've got a copy of Dark Souls 3 if you want to borrow it. What's it on? Uh, Xbox. It's in a very cool 
that mm. it was one of the when I was mm. first in the games industry and was That's sent a cool. copy and it's like wax sealed. It's really cool. Ooh, you piqued <laughs> my interest. When you said Xbox, I was like, I don't use the Xbox as much. It takes ages to turn on. It's like, uh, it's usually unplugged and I have to find the plug. And uh, that was an obstacle I'm not able to overcome. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm talking way too casually here. These are more <laughs> Luke problems for later, not audience <laughs> problems that you need to hear about now. What format does Luke hypothetically maybe want to play Dark Souls 3 on? Maybe I should play Bloodborne. Bloodborne, yeah. <laughs> yeah, play Bloodborne. I want to play Bloodborne. Maybe That's the one that yeah. I kind of want to sneak in on, I think. There's another one in the works, isn't there? Elden Ring. Yeah, that's the... That's a, yeah, that's the, years the, away the, though. That's not the, gonna, yeah, yeah. The, the new from the software. Martin one. Martin. George oh, George R. 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 Martin. Martin. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know Martin. I nearly Martin's said made it. <laughs> yeah. You know Martin. He's in IT. Yeah, he's made it. He's made it with from software. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Oh, nice. Um, well, I think you know you've had a bit of a challenge with your combat skills, I but I think now we should you know let your muscles relax a little bit. Uh, and instead, we should challenge this this thing this? in your in My your hair? head. Oh, your brain. Some some brain training game out at the moment. Maybe I might quiz you on it. Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training for Nintendo Switch is out now! This classic series sees you try out different minigames in an attempt to train your brain. The goal is to improve your memory and speed and improve your brain age. Luke, mm. in spirit of this, yes. I've taken some of the brand new minigames, of which there are many, thanks to the Switch's new things that it can do compared to the old DS titles. Yep. Um, and I've created my own take on them to try and work out what your brain age is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Ellen thinks she can devise better tests than Professor, or is it Doctor? Doctor. Doctor Kawashima. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've used his work as a base for me to build uh, my You've stood on work. the shoulders of giants. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I giant think, Kawashima. I think that, you know, it, w it will really show um, in this quiz. Yeah. Just, just, just I think how. so. This is great. This is like a free medical. New mode speed counting. Mm. Sees you count. What did you find? <laughs> how did I do? Sees you count aloud. <laughs> <laughs> From 1 to 120. Yep. And hit the done panel on the switch once you're complete. Okay. And it says, careful to not get too ahead of yourself. <laughs> what do you think is that? Now? Okay, all right. For this, to gauge your brain age. Oh my god, I'm actually going to have to count to 120. No, no, no. Instead of counting quickly to 120, because that would be okay. quite dull to watch. <laughs> We're talking about it would be electrifying. <laughs> I would like to see how quickly you can list not numbers. But members of the Spice Girls. Oh. Okay. All right. Hang on. I'm just becoming at rest. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Push it to me, Mr. Sporty. <laughs> what was that? One point four six. Yes. <laughs> Have some of that. A new world record. I think we'll replay that. Before yes. <laughs> that, uh, just check what. All the spices were. Posh Ginger, Baby Scary Sporty. Some of the new mini games feature use of the Nintendo Switch's IR camera, using infrared technology to count how many fingers you're holding up or what shape they're in. Luke, I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions, yeah. which you must answer using only your hands. Okay, great. Easy. Okay, okay, I've got a series of 10 quick fire questions. Love it, love it. What is five minus three? What is four plus three? No one said there'd be maths, man. No way. There you go. <laughs> How many Power Rangers are there? Would you prefer option one, a nice relaxing bath, or two, a night out in a club with obnoxiously loud music? Bonnie Tyler sang Total Eclipse of the What? <laughs> How do you feel about stairs? <laughs> no faces, it's all. Just, oh, sorry, no faces, sorry, just hands. Um, <laughs> Lino and Chitaro were members of Thunder What? Um, <laughs> little. Hang on, hang on. Cats of music. Here's the. 
That's the tale, all right? <laughs> okay, I um, would have accepted. Oh, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> that's still including the face, so that doesn't count. Um, how many original Pokemon are there? Mm. <laughs> oh my god. Nice. <laughs> Billy Joel sang the song Blank Man about a person who played a musical instrument. What one? Yeah! <laughs> Piano Man! Bruce Wayne is which hero? Um. Um. Would have also accepted. Is that part of the face? Yeah, I can uh, allow that. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be good. No, oh, I think you. This is uh, great. How did I do? Smash that! It was good. Oh. That was good. Woo. One new task is reading aloud. Oh. Where yeah. you have to read aloud selected newspaper articles from the past and put your reading and speech skills to the test. Luke, I have an excerpt from an important piece of news and would like you to read it as fast but as clear as possible. Okay. Mouth and the tongue, teeth and the lips. Okay. Three. So it's got to be comprehensible. Yes. But as fast and as clear as I can. Yes. Okay. Three. I'm seeing it for the first time. Three, two, one, go. Today there was hysteria in the air as Luke Westaway showed a darker side to the world. However, not content with merely allowing his evil twin to try and take over show of the weekend as well as the world, it turns out his true colours have been fully on display for years now. Mr Westaway is a delinquent. His crime, not taking his best friend and all-round best person Ellen Rose on an all-expenses trip to Walt Disney World. Fans are aghast at his cruelty as he denies his co-worker the chance to go on the carousel of progress, followed by a pub crawl around Epcot with Donald Duck. We tried to reach him for comment, but he told us to go away and talk to literally everyone else in the world before contacting him again. Contacting him again! Damn! You lose five seconds for okay. every mistake. All right. uh, so you made one mistake there. But that wasn't it too was bad. It was 28 seconds, 42. That's pretty good. So uh, pretty that, good. That's, that's up to 33 seconds, 42. That's not bad. I like it. Okay. Yeah, really cool. good. And what do you have to say about that? Okay. Um, I have to say that I was not paying attention to content. <laughs> I was concentrating <laughs> so hard on delivering. Delinquent? <laughs> <laughs> Crime! I tell you what, it's a good job this wasn't a confession. <laughs> fans are aghast at his cruelty. <laughs> well, are they still fans? <laughs> hey, if you're still fans after being <laughs> aghast at my cruelty, then then thanks for sticking. I would go on a pub crawl with Donald Duck. <laughs> I bet things would get messy immediately. Like he'd have one drink and like kick someone. <laughs> Uh, another new game in Dr. Karashima's dra brain, brain, drain training. Brain draining. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain energy goes into the switch and all fuels Kawashima, <laughs> the giant Kawashima head. Every time someone plays, he gets a bit smarter. <laughs> anyway, another new game on uh, in the brain draining game yep. <laughs> is Dr. Germ Karashima's Buster. brain drain. <laughs> Germ Buster. Uh, okay. Which is uh, to Clean enjoy, Kawashima's house. <laughs> enjoy some post-training relaxation oh, by taking a break from your daily exercises and arranging falling coloured blocks into stacks. Mm. Now, Luke, this game, if you look at it, was clearly inspired by the Nintendo classic Dr. Mario. Oh, okay. Well, it gives you the option of also moving the pieces around a bit more freely, like you right, can drag right, them right, with right. the stylus or with your finger okay. and things like that. Okay. It's pretty cool. Lovely. Even features music from the game, but like a really chill version. It's really sweet. Dreamy. Mm. My question to gauge your brain age is, did you play this game and on what platform? Did I play Dr. Mario? Mm -hmm. uh, no, I never did. I think it came out on the uh, SNES. Uh, which I had, but I didn't have that game. Um, I had, I, I think I first played it when an evil friend of mine with an emulator, um, <laughs> <laughs> an evil friend of mine with an emulator was like, Luke, emulating games is good and easy, and let me show you some <laughs> games. And I was like, we shouldn't, we mustn't, but he, he showed me it anyway. <laughs> he showed me, um, yeah. And so I played it then, so I played it like on a computer, I guess. I don't really like it. 
and I really like it. It came out on smartphones recently, and I sort of tried to get into it on on that, and I just I don't know, I don't, I don't know. It's not got that sort of Tetrisy. I think it's because I haven't already played it, so I'm not already good at it. So I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I played it on Game Boy. Oh really? Oh okay. So well, I played it. Oh, I played it without colour. Cool. Wow. Without cut, I just had to go by pattern. That was probably before the SNES then. Oh man, playing it in black and white. Yeah. But the music was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only know the music from Smash Brothers. <sighs> Sorry, I just need a moment. <sighs> Finally, yeah. I'm just gonna mm. run off and get something. Oh, okay. Oh my word. One of the new features uh, is the multiplayer mini games, oh which you can gosh. now play thanks to the detachable Joy Cons. Mm. For this final thing, I would like to challenge you on Sofa to some real brain training by playing one of the mini games. Okay. Now we've already played this in multiplayer. We have. We, we played at a Nintendo event. We did. We did indeed, and uh, it was really fun. And who who won that brain training? It was you, Luke. We have the uh, mm. different options for multiplayer games and yeah. I, I would quite like to do bird watching or box counting. Okay. Because that's the exciting person that I am. <laughs> they both sound like such a thrill. Why don't we do mm -hmm. bo box counting? Yeah. Box counting because it's okay. hard. This is hard. Yeah. It may activate your prefrontal cortex, Ellen, so may. watch out for that. Okay. All right. So remind me what we do so here, we've Ellen. Gotta, we've got to do this and then you press that. So you've got to hold it, hold it, and then that. So that's, and then that's to so I think we have to count how many boxes there are using ZR or ZL for you. So you, and then you the top click one. the number of boxes that you think there okay. are, right? Okay. Oops. Okay, we're the there other we way go. around. That's me. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. It's tight. Oh. No. <gasps> hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so it's, uh, a, it's a five by five slow. square, and there were two missing, so you just had to take away two from twenty-five. Well, that, so that's how it's done. <laughs> but uh, you won. I won. No, it's because I made a mistake. Shouldn't have made a that mistake. That one. Look at that one mistake. Shouldn't have made a mistake. That would be my advice. That one mistake cost well, me five seconds. Look at the. Look. So it looks like. And it's, I knew that I pressed. So it looks like it's 2 0. <laughs> looks like it's 2 0. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race, folks. <laughs> this is going to have to be a Christmas challenge. So now. bad at myself. <laughs> look at it. Look. Look how close that was. It's not fair. I like, been that like split second. It quicker. didn't seem that close to me, but then as we've proved, I, I can perceive tiny distances of time <laughs> with incredible clarity. So you know, it, it would it may have seemed close, but in fact, <laughs> it was a great span of time. To me. I composed a sonnet in, in, in that. <laughs> so like the Flash or Spider Man, yeah, you can yeah, exactly, see yeah, yeah, things yeah. as they're happening. Be like, mm. Mm. yeah. <laughs> You've beat, you're definitely younger than me by brain age. It but what is seem. my brain age? It's still quite old because you knew all the Spice Girls. <laughs> oh my god. 
whole thing was a trap. <laughs> Young people and know you, the Spice Girls, don't they? And you know how many Power Rangers there were. You knew about the Thundercats. Oh, <laughs> you no. knew about Dr. Mario oh being on Snap. Oh no, the whole thing was a trap. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely right, yep. man. The question should have been on, it should have been like, how many Fortnites are there? <laughs> how many dabs can you do in a minute? Two, well, that's one too many. <laughs> yeah. that's that, Correct. That's it. The correct, that's answer, the correct that answer was the, zero. That was... <laughs> That's our, our dad quota for the year. So Phil, for the decade, that, that's everything. it. That's it. Look, 2030, we might do another one. I can't, look, physically can't. Physi do good, it. good. Keep those hand, arms at the side. Oh, the tragedy the is same. that even that brief dab will be gift. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great quiz. Hey, Thank you, Ellen. I especially so like fun. saying the Spice Girls really fast. Yeah. <laughs> but should we find out what you guys have been saying really fast? In, In the, the comments. Ginger Scary Posh, baby. That's what you it's the start of a new decade, so perhaps it was only fitting that before 2019 wrapped, we had the Outside Xbox and Outside Extra teams choose one single game from the last 10 years that they would save from the apocalypse. I have a lot of honourable mentions. Rise of the Tomb Raider, the entire Dishonored series, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Nier Automata, Horizon Zero Dawn, Batman Arkham City, I'd say Arkham... Asylum, but that was in the previous decade. Don't you feel old? Now, it was very, very difficult for me to choose, hence all the honourable mentions, but ultimately, it has to be Kingdoms of Amala Reckoning that I saved from the apocalypse. <laughs> it wasn't actually very widely loved. It was very, very much loved by the people who did play it, but it made the mistake of coming out right after Skyrim. <laughs> it was great to look back at a decade of spectacular video games, although plenty of viewers guessed your favourite, Ellen. Ellen, this was very hard for me to choose all of YouTube. It's Kingdoms of Amalur! What? How did they know that I would pick that? Really? Must have mentioned it before in a previous video. Moving on. We locked horns in the annual Outside Extra Xmas Challenge, a series of gruelling challenges played out over seven days to determine the new winner of Christmas, including the infamous Pikachu drawing challenge, this time played out in Mario Maker 2. Now I know what you're thinking, it looks more like Yoda, a baby Yoda. And maybe that's, maybe that's true, but the rosy cheeks, yes, they are flame turrets. So I'm pretty, I'm proud to them. Pretty, pretty chuffed with that, I have to say. The actual best Pikachu this year. I think it has to be Pikachu 1. No! Yes! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Woo! Oh, Ellen. I'm sorry. Have for cheeks. But then the. <laughs> bombs for eyes! <laughs> yeah. The absolute state of that verdict. Anyway, commenter Laszlock thinks that there's something satisfying in your victory, Luke. 2018, Luke loses the challenge when he uses explosives on Pikachu's face. 2019, Luke wins the challenge by putting explosives in Pikachu's face. That's called a redemption arc. See, my Pikachu also came with narrative closure. Did yours? No, mine just looks like an actual Pikachu. The Xmas Challenge also saw us face off in a series of athletic matchups in Mario and Sonic at the 2020 Olympics, including football, running, and karate. I guess that's a- Two one to Luke. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. Daisy, why are you even here? You didn't do anything. You weren't part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing Daisy faced in that karate tournament was as savage as this comment from Vanilla Knox Florette, who said, Trust Daisy to come third in a two-person fight. Ow! Or what? Oh, it's just that burn. It was so savage. I think I got caught in the radius. Oh, we should get some aloe vera on that. Not yet. There's one more comment to read. Must struggle on. Okay, well, it's a comment on our yeah. latest D&D adventure, which saw us questing up an icy mountain and confronting an evil trapper who made a serious enemy of Meryl when by luring zombified animals to his taxidermy-filled lodge after catching them in cursed traps. You know, the kind of trap that Dob fell into. Yeah, this place is absolutely teeming with not wildlife. It's just every spare inch of wall, every corner, uh, it's full of just taxidermied animals, absolutely everywhere. Whoa. This is like a hunter's lodge, Whoa. to end all hunter's lodges. Comet Atoshi World sees a new quest on the horizon. New mission, make sure Dob doesn't die and become a tacky room decoration. Tacky? What's tacky? Uh, 
Uh, Ellen, I can't continue the burn. Uh, uh, we, should we get you some medical attention? Yes, please. Come on. Oh, it's blistering. Should it smell like this? No. All better now. Oh, good. All better. Isn't modern Fine. medicine amazing? Yeah. All just, sorted. Just a bit of aloe vera. Yeah. Problem solved. How was she, Vera? She was not sympathetic. <laughs> she, every time I, yeah, I'm like, she's burned again. She's like, hello. In my mind, Vera. Hello, Vera. Hello, Vera. <laughs> it's just like, I see you burn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is better. It's cooling. Ellen, yeah? did you eat lots of delicious sweets over the Christmas period? Oh, yeah. Well, I bet you didn't see anything as delicious as this. <gasps> a gingerbread oh. joyful damnation. This is uh, submitted by The Helening, who posted That's these. So good. I have Look. two words to say. Holy shit. It's absolutely incredible. So we showed this to producer John earlier and he was saying that the, that the gingerbread sales would have had to yeah. be left, so curved. left on a curved so surface. Curved bits of the ship as well. Mm, the, the, the piping work on that as the well. The detail, everywhere I look, there's incredible detail. Right, you've got to get on the next series of Bake Off, right? And then make this and then... <gasps> yeah, and then get and kicked then... out that week because they'll be <laughs> absolutely baffled. They'll be like, what's an Ox Venture? <laughs> This is, is no one in Britain understands. That'd be great because some poor Channel 4, 4 reach, researcher will then have to talk to us. Oh yeah, that'd like, be great. Yeah. What the hell are you? Oh my you? god, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Paul Hollywood cutting into it, being like, "Well, I don't know about I don't know what Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> but the bake is very good. <laughs> this little pirate man, it's very well done." <laughs> it's like yes, Paul. <laughs> Annoyed at Paul Hollywood now, he hasn't done anything. <laughs> Check this out. Look. Oh, a, wow. Another staggering Oxventure poster from The Marvelous Mr. C. Oh, almost literally staggering as we try and climb yeah. a large mountain. I love it. I love so it. good. The Everyone is, looks so epic and like. The thing is, with these posters that Colin Krakus does yes. of our D&D &D adventures, yeah. is that when we play d and I'm imagining it. And it's a limitless imagination, and it doesn't look as good as this. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful as ever. So good. We've got a so bit, good. bit more D and D work. And on this next page, Ellen, <gasps> is some audio. What? Listen closely to it. Ooh. You will hear that it is a musical submission from Brian Shona, who's written an original composition based on our latest D and D Ooh. adventure, Peak Performance. This is the ballad of Peak Performance, star of the Ox Adventurers Guild. Well, Binbag sent the guild up on a mountain. He said there was an ancient evil there. So they packed up all their gear and said, we'll fix it, never fear. And they went to face that evil in its lair. They learned there was a dragon on the mountain, old and strong and hopefully asleep. So they split the group in two, not the smartest thing to do. And up that icy mountain, they did creep. Yay! Oh, it's, a, it's amazing, right? Yeah. It's um. It, also, it goes on for way longer than than we played yeah. just there. It's like four minutes long. We'll pop a link in the description to the video mm -hmm. to, to the full to the full thing if you want to listen to it. Um, yeah, it's really good. And like other I, instruments come in. I oh, love it's amazing. stuff like that. It makes me feel like I'm at Disneyland. Yes. Like that would be that would be the music on a ride of peak performance yeah. at Disneyland. Yeah, oh peak performance make a good ride. Yeah, so yeah, that was really cool, really yeah. cool, really awesome. Thank you everyone for your awesome uh, so fan such art such submissions. Talented fan people, music, well such done. Talented, talented, talented. I couldn't even say talented. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Well, Ellen, we laughed, we cried, we screamed the Spice Girls. <laughs> We well, counted some boxes. Yeah. I, I screamed. We, we learned our we learned that our brains are old and yes. yet supple. Uh, we are doing a D and D Ogs Ventures at Rest in London in March. If yes. you want to come see them live, there are next live shows in the calendar. Yes, roll some twenties in 2020. Ah! Yeah. 2020, 20, crit, 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 crit. It's a critical year. Critical, double critical, critical year. year. But yes, if you want to come along, mm -hmm. then uh, the dates are the 27th and the 28th. That's a Friday and a Saturday of March. March. Tickets are running low for both already. dates already, wow. which is a awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah. to everyone who's already bought Cheers. tickets. That is rad and, yeah. and super encouraging. 
Uh, but B, snap out those tickets if you do want to come along. Yes. It's, uh, it's always such a good time. Uh, yeah, it's great. And yeah. you know, Rest is also a good time. We do like meet and greets. And, yeah, it's, it's, good. It's, it's a good show it's as well. Really, it's one a cool, of my favorite really cool ones. Show. Lots yeah. of cool indie games and small titles that you might not hear about otherwise. It has a lovely vibe. Really lovely nice vibe. Show. Yeah, so hopefully see a bunch of you there. Mm -hmm. uh, right, Ellen, I think it's time that we went off and did more brain training. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a go at doing the Spice Girls? Okay, okay. Shout, shout. All right, hang on. I'm going to time you. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I'm going to do the intro of Wannabe. <coughs> as okay. fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Go. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Tell me what I want, what I really, really want. What hat, what hat, what hat, what hat, what I really, really, really want. Zig, zig, ah. 4.77 seconds, Thank Ellen. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't really enunciate as well as I could have. Yeah, but neither did I. <laughs>